Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video, we will talk about the manual extraction of the placenta and the manual and instrumental revision of the uterine cavity after the delivery of a baby. In the first part of the video, we will talk about the manual removal of the placenta and in the second part of the video, about the revision of the uterus after delivery. When is it necessary to remove the placenta manually? Usually within minutes after delivery of the baby, the placenta is delivered spontaneously. If the placenta is not delivered spontaneously, until 60 minutes after the baby is delivered, we have to remove it manually. The other indication for a manual removal of the placenta is if there is a considerable amount of hemorrhage caused by the placenta or the uterus before the placenta is expulsed spontaneously. How can we manually remove the placenta? To remove the placenta, the doctor introduces one gloved hand into the uterus while the other hand is placed on the fundus of the uterus from the outside. To find the placenta, the doctor can follow the umbilical cord with the internal hand to the point of insertion of the umbilical cord into the placenta. Usually the umbilical cord inserts centrally in the placenta. From the point of insertion, the doctor can now use the internal hand to find the outer edge of the placenta. From there the doctor tries to put the fingertips carefully like a spoon between the edge of the placenta and the wall of the uterus. The placenta and the uterus are highly vascularized, so this procedure has to be done very carefully to not rupture the wall of the uterus. The doctor then proceeds to detach the placenta carefully with a gentle up and down motion following along the area of the placenta. The placenta has a diameter of around 20 cm and once completely detached, it will fall into the doctor's hand and can be taken out of the uterus. After the placenta is removed, it has to be examined that the surface is smooth. No parts of the placenta should stay within the uterus. We should also check the placenta if there are any large blood clots. Any remaining parts of the placenta inside the uterus can lead to severe postpartum hemorrhage and infection. If you want to know more about postpartum hemorrhage, you can see our video on that in the gynecology playlist. In rare occasions, it is not possible to detach the placenta manually. This is for example the case in placenta accreta or placenta percreta, where the placental tissue goes deeper than just the endometrium. If you want to know more about placenta accreta and placenta percreta, you can see our video in the gynecology playlist. In this case, we unfortunately have to remove the uterus as it otherwise leads to life-threatening hemorrhage. Another way to deliver the placenta is called controlled cord traction. This method can be used when the placenta separated from the uterus spontaneously but fails to exit the uterus by itself. In this method, the doctor places one hand on the abdomen just above the pubic bone. This is done to avoid an inversion of the uterus. The other hand grasps the umbilical cord. Then we tell the mother to push while we gently pull on the umbilical cord for the placenta to be delivered. After the delivery of the placenta, we also examine it for its completeness in this delivery method. In the next part of the video, we will talk about the manual and instrumental examination of the uterus after the delivery of the baby and the placenta. This is also called revision of the uterine cavity. The uterine cavity is usually examined manually after a delivery. 
We also have to make a revision of the uterus in the case of a spontaneous abortion or a mis miscarriage. We want to explore the uterine cavity for any placental tissue that remained inside the cavity and also for blood clots and a possible rupture of the uterus. This is done to prevent postpartum hemorrhage, infection or other complications after delivery. We also perform a revision of the uterus when there is a postpartum hemorrhage within 24 hours after delivery or after every manual removal of the placenta. The normal uterus consists of two faces, two sides, the fundus, the isthmus and two horns. These areas have to be checked either manually or with instruments. In the manual exploration, we insert a gloved hand and systematically go through the inner lining of the uterus. If any abnormalities, as placental tissue or blood clots are found, we remove them with the hand. An instrumental revision usually occurs as a dilation and curatage. This should be done if there is an incomplete abortion or if the cervix is not dilated enough for a manual revision. For the instrumental revision, the patient should either receive a regional anesthesia in the form of a spinal or epidural anesthesia or a general anesthesia. A speculum is first inserted into the vagina to keep it open. Then the cervix is opened either with medications or with cervical rods which are instruments with increasing thickness to gradually open the cervix. After the cervix is opened, either a suction device or a curette can be used to explore the uterine cavity. A curette is like a long spoon that either has a solid front part or a fenestrated front part. The front part is used to detach any irregularities in the uterine lining. Also in this procedure, the entire uterine cavity should be followed systematically, usually starting at the fundus of the uterus until reaching the cervix of the uterus. In this way also material that is removed is usually brought outwards. If this procedure is done after the delivery of a baby, we usually administer oxytocin either intramuscularly or intravenously to encourage the uterus to contract and involute. This minimizes blood loss. What complications can occur after a uterine revision? If there is persistent bleeding after the revision, it is possible that not all retained material was removed during the revision. Then the revision has to be repeated. Trauma to the uterus, cervix or vagina is possible during a revision of the uterus. They should be sutured if necessary to prevent further blood loss. In case of a perforation of the uterus, the perforation should be repaired and the patient should be given prophylactic antibiotics to prevent an infection of the uterus. The antibiotics of choice are usually amoxicillin with clavulanic acid or amoxicillin with metronidazole for 5 days. Also, injury to the bladder is possible. The risk for bladder injury can usually be minimized by emptying the bladder before the procedure. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you again in the next video.